Hi everyone, welcome back. It is Mixed Media Friday. I'm just going to take a second to load our video and our comments and plug my phone in. There we go. I'll give everyone a minute to come in. There we go. And that should be good. Maybe move it that way just a little bit. Hi, Sherry. Thanks for joining. So I have a few things in front of me tonight, and I'll quickly go through them as I set up. So for tonight's video, we're going to need our acrylic paints. Um, we're going to need some of our favorite sprays. Um, I think I moved mine. I see my brushes in front of me, but not my, not my sprays. One sec. Yeah, they're behind there. I can show you guys these too. This is a great dollar store solution that I have on my desk. And I'll show you guys both of them. And they hold like a lot of stuff. So actually that's the first thing I'll do guys. I'll move everything here so I can get to my Seth After sprays because my two favorite are here. Uh, I'll show you, show you them. Here we go. So here I have these cute little dollar store baskets, if you guys can see. They are three-tiered, and I have two of them. So in this one, we have I have my Prima stencils. I have some of the mermaid stencils that I purchased from um, the Crafters Workshop. This one here is beautiful. It's Prima. And these little baskets hold three tiers of stuff, so I can kind of keep my, my stencils in the back. And then I have these ones here, too. Uh, Sherry, you sent me this one, the circles. This is absolutely awesome. So I have that one in here as well with my Tim Holtz moon masks. So this is in here at the back. And then I have my small talk um, words from Tim Holtz. I have two packs of those. All my This holds all of my distress crayons. And here I have two bottles of the Seth Apter Eyes Inc. Aladine fast drying no clog dye spray. So this is comparable to um Tim Holtz uh distress spray stain, which is like the liquid version, spray version of his um of his um distress ink, right? And but these bottles are 2.7 full ounces and Tim Holtz are one ounce. So I just wanted to share that. So they're, they're quite a bit bigger. So you get more product. It's kind of like a better bang for your buck. And I just love Seth After's colors. So I have, um, three of his so far and I have another two on the way. So I'm really excited about that. And then my distress crayons are here. So that kind of lives over there at my desk and then I have a second one here and as you guys can see it holds a lot of stuff these are two dollars at Dollarama and they do and I have um uh, if you guys have seen my craft room um, overhaul videos I have um I have um baskets that all match this so they're like a plastic and they look kind of like a wicker basket but they're really sturdy and I have them lining my um my shelving my industrial shelving and I also have them in my cube shelving so it kind of ties my decor kind of in and then so my big print paint brushes are here like the super tall ones um the rest I keep in a can that I've like decoupaged and I have them here my Dina Wakely brushes I cannot recommend these enough these are her mixed media um these are her mixed media um rubber brushes and I'll show you guys 
a pile of stuff you can do with these. So they're kind of like a new go-to. And in here I keep my, my stencil brushes and I keep my, um, my regular paint brushes and my bone folder, my craft knife, and um, I have a Cricut crafting pick. I keep that in here too for weeding my die cuts, my paint brushes, and I have a larger silicone brush here from Prima, and I use that for uh, texture, paste, and different things. So again, guys, I just keep that all in a can. So I just wanted to quickly share, since I had to grab those, of how I kind of organize. So here I have my Earth Glitter Glue. I have another one with uh, Aleens in it. I pull this all off because if I need something like it's a huge area um, to glue, I'll just use that. I have here Fabric Fusion, but I prefer Fabric Tac. I have one of the um, Sugar Bell um, bottles from Michaels that Lori had sent me. I have a glue stick here, which I don't really use. My Tim Holtz scissors, my Distress Sprayer. I have a couple of his stencil brushes. I actually see these ones here too, guys, to compare. So they're like this, and then you kind of hold them where you want to um, use them. And then you, w the further you slide this part here to the to the tip, the more controlled of an area you're, you're going to have, opposed to having the flimsier brush like this. But I just find these because of the the length of them, they would be better if they were longer. Because for me, they're really hard on my wrists to use them. So I had six, but um, Sneak Peek Tammy, I had two brand new ones. And I sent you and Lori one to try to see if you like them. And I kept four, but I don't really use them. I switched to these. These are um, Royal and Langnickel. They're from the UK. And they came in bunch of different sizes here so when I'm stenciling they're nice size they're not hard on my wrist and I have a good grip on them I don't have to worry about moving all over the place and I love the sizes so then when I'm stenciling if I want to do a very small area it's easier to get that precise um, small area and you're not using such a big brush that um, you end up with parts of the stencil that you don't want and they came in a set of four so I have like the very thick one right down to a, a little fine tip so this is great if you want to get into like a tiny little area that you don't want um, to, that you can't get into with a big brush and these are great the the um, the bristles on them are very um, coarse just like the um, like comparable to the Tim Holtz um, distress brushes and these are quite expensive in Canada um, they're probably around I would say $20 for a set of two and this set here was I think 15 but I got four brushes so I was really happy with these so I just wanted to share that and then of course my Tim Holtz stencils are all here so that's my collection there so that's how I store these and these baskets hold quite a bit and then of course my my Jelly Arts um, um, texture tools. I got these on Amazon. And then I have a little collage brush here. I don't really use this one. I use the medium one the most for, um, for decoupaging. And then I have a regular paintbrush I use as well. So tonight I want to have handy my um, eye zinc stuff after sprays. And then the other thing I'm using is... Oh no, that's awful, Tammy. I, you see safe, love? You guys are having a horrible storm. It just started raining here, so I'm not sure what's going on. I have the um, Liquitex Basics Acrylic 48 Pack. This is a great way, guys, to sample paint. They're small little containers. They're one, one full ounce. Nope, 20... Uh, 22 milliliters, 0 0.74 full ounces. So they are quite small, but you have a ton of them. So I'm really, really excited. So I'm, as you can see, I've only used one sort of set of these. And it comes with, I think, four. Yeah, there's four here. You guys can see that. 
So I'm not really going to be using... All right, I want the yellow okra. Let's do this one. Because that's a nice yellow. Because we're going for grungy tonight. So I've got yellow okra. So this is a great way to sample like um, brands of paint without committing to buying full, um, full containers of them. And this wasn't bad, guys. I think this was um, between $45 and $50 for this whole set. So this was more of a, more of um, a bang for your buck. And then, of course, I have raw umber, uh, burnt sienna, red oxide, raw sienna. I'll pull these all out. So I have some lots of nice browns and golds and, yeah, and maples yellow hue, copper, bronze, gold. Yeah, those look fun. Okay, and then I can just put this aside, beside me. Now the other thing, so I have a couple of sprays, I have some acrylic paint, and it doesn't matter guys, use what you have. So if you guys have dollar store paints, like I have some of the deco art ones, I have some craft paints and different things, um, they work just as well on your jelly plate as anything else. So use what you have. And then I have this one here, the mixed media pad of the Ranger Archival inks in Hickory Smoke Vintage Photo Ground Espresso and Black Soot. I have, um, I'm going to be ordering the uh, Tim Holtz four pack of the single, the single uh, pads, the full size ones. So I do have those on, on order right now, but for now I'm just gonna be using this one. So I have that handy. I've grabbed my favorite Tim Holtz stamps. So these are like my favorite grungy, go-to grungy background stamps. So I just wanted to show this. I have um, CMS Slight Alterations 060. I have Spills and Splatters CMS 028. I have Mixed Media 125. I have Ultimate Grunge 075. Glitch 1 CMS 403. Glitch 2 CMS 404. Bitty Grunge, CMS 089, Mini Glitch, 405, and I have, this is new to me, and um, this one is from Tammy for my birthday, and Ultimate Grunge was from Lori, and I believe... Yeah, Ultimate Grunge from Lori. So I'm excited to use my new stamps. And my husband had bought me these two sets um, for my birthday as well. So I have uh, Mini Muse CMS 063 and Urban Chic CMS 086. So I'm excited, guys, to play with my some of my new sets. And they're all beautiful background stamps. So I have those. And then I have my 5x7 jelly plate. And tonight we're going to be working on... Um, regular copy paper you do not need we do not want to use um mixed media cardstock for this we just want to use our regular copy paper that we'd use in our printer and i have deli sheets so these are kind of for making like a translucent um collage paper so you can kind of see through them so i'm going to show you guys that so tonight we're doing like a prep for next week. So this video is kind of going to be two parts. So when I'm, I'm going to be going through all the different methods of doing collaging. So tonight I want to make our collage papers. So that's kind of the method behind the madness, guys. I want to share the entire process of how, how I do this. And of course I have my brayers. And it doesn't matter. Um, some people like to wash their, their brayer and they like to wash their gel plates. I don't, and um, I used to, but um, I've been watching a lot of stuff after demos and videos and, and things, and I love the effect that when you, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about with that, when you don't wash your gel plate, you get like remnants or leftover from like the last time that you've gel plated, and then you end up with these really neat effects when eventually when your paint does come up and come off. 
So it's really cool. So I just wanted to share that. So I am working with the 5x7 plate tonight. I'm going to put my Tim Holtz stamps beside me. And we're going to pull this out. Here we go. And I have both. I have the 8x10 and I have the... I have the 8x10 and I have the 5x7 and I also have the shapes so I'm going to be um, going into that further too. I just want to make sure that I'm completely in focus and you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, I'll move that up even. That should probably be good right here. Yeah. Just waiting for my video to catch up. Perfect. You guys will be able to see perfectly what I'm doing and my colors can go to this side. And then what I want to do, I don't mind about the deli sheet, but I want to, I want to break these down. So if I want to break them down, I just yeah, fold them in half and give them a tear. They don't have to be perfect. I'm essentially making collage sheets, guys. Just like that. And we'll do a few. Now, the other thing I wanted to share, not all gel plates are created equal. So there's one by a company called Speedball. And um, I would avoid that plate, guys, because um, the Speedball jelly plate is only made for their Speedball inks. So your acrylic paint will not stick to it properly, and neither will any of your, um, your distress or water-based products. So like your... Um, Seth Aptor sprays or your Tim Holtz sprays or anything like that. So I just wanted to share that. And this should be probably more than enough. And I want to show you guys some different techniques tonight about how to build build up your background on your gel plate. Um, I noticed a lot of people too, like when you're watching different demos and different videos and stuff, a lot of people only do one or two layers and then they pull their print. I'm going to show you something different. And this is similar to how Seth Aptor does his. I've learned a lot watching his video, so I'm full on giving him credit for some of these uh, jelly plate techniques because his videos are fabulous. So, and again, guys, play with what you have. So whatever your favorite background stamps are and stamps for creating texture and um, texture and depth, Go for it. Feel free to use what you have. I just have Tim Holtz, and it's my go-to and what I use. So I want to start out with simple background stamps. And I always, this one is my go-to. So for me, if you're looking for a really good background stamp, this is a favorite for me. This is called Slight Alterations. I absolutely love this set. So we're going to build up some layers, and then I want to go with this one too, um, spills and splatters. So I'm going to go ahead and open them. As you can see, they're well loved. My packaging is like done on that one. There we go. And slight alterations. Okay, here we go. So for this technique, I would not use um, I would not use um, any kind of um, stamping block. I'm just going to put down bits and pieces of my of my stamp. So I'm just going to come in, and I'm going to use Ranger Archival Ink. So you can use Stays On on your jelly plate. You can use Ranger Archival, and um, you're going to get a better stamp from something that's archival than something that is water-based like your distress ink or your oxide it's going to smear so that's a great effect when you're building up layers over paint but um for our um like our um our first layer of background we want something that's going to um that isn't going to move so i'm just going to move these out of my way guys so you guys can see what i'm doing okay so I want a darker color, so I'm going to come into Ground Espresso, which is right here, and I'm going to come into my, if you guys can see that, 
here we go I'm gonna ink up my stamp and I just give a good firm press so this is ground espresso that I'm coming into if you guys can see that I want a good a good ink I find this pad to be great for this technique, but awful when you're trying to do the um, the stamping platform. The um, individual ink pads work better, just for getting all the details on your stamp. But this is great for um, when you're using the jelly plate, or if you're just doing some stamping where you want bits and pieces. So I'm going to convert ink. See, I've done that. I want to come right onto the jelly plate with my Ranger Archival. And I'm going to come into the top corner like this. I'm going to put my stamp down like that. And I'm just going to give this nice, even pressure. Like this. Okay. And that is going to stick right to my plate. If you guys can see that. It's perfect. I hope the camera's picking that up. There we go. So yeah, that's stuck right to the, my plate. So that's there. And then I want to come in kind of like on the bottom. So we create like a... And because it's archival, it's not going to move, guys. And that's awesome. I've got a little bit of the other color there, too. So I'm just going to come in this way. We'll put some down here. Some slight alterations. The only thing that I you can't do on the jelly plate, because um, this is kind of like another way of doing an image transfer. So if you have um, words with um, script on it, anything that's words, it's going to make it backwards. So when you stamp it, it's going to be perfect on here, but then when you transfer it off, it's going to be backwards, and then all of the images or anything that you stamp are going to be flipped. So I just wanted to show that. And then I have spills and splatters here. So we can come right in with this one. And maybe in the center. And I'll hit this one with Vintage Photo. So it's kind of like a bit of a subtle effect. Of course, the other one will be darker. And there we go. Make sure I have a good ink on that. Okay, and I'm going to put that right in the middle. So we'll start with this. And again, I will show you guys the effect. So that's what we have so far. And then I can come in with my acrylic paints. And for this one, I'm going to probably use my smaller brayer because I'm using a smaller plate. And let's come in with something um, a little darker. Um, first and then we can go into lighter so I'm thinking for this one some burnt umber some Naples yellow hue and then something like a reddish color we've got maybe burnt sienna yep that looks good okay so I want to come in with burnt umber towards the bottom and again, guys, you only use a tiny little bit. So I'm just going to come in and dab. If you guys can see that. So I'm going to dab it here. And then I'm going to pull it. And move my paint around. Like that. And 
and then I want to come in with raw umber of each words here. And I put a little bit more. That's a good dab. And then I'm going to get bits and pieces. So some layers are thinner and some are going to be thicker. And maybe having that as like that bits and pieces coming across like that. And then I'm going to add some of my yellow just a little bit. Hi, Lori. Thanks for joining. Here we go. I'm liking that effect. And it's a little lighter towards the bottom. You can blend it, but you don't have to. I'm giving it a little bit of a blend. And then I want to come in with... Yeah, let's lighten it up a little bit with raw sienna. We can come right kind of in the middle. And add a little color here and some, some texture. All right, so this is where we're at so far. We've got a very light coat on here in several different colors that I've kind of blended out. And then, as I mentioned, I have the, um, the mixed media tools by Dina Wakely. So I just want to touch that with some water just so we're, we're damp. We're not soaking wet, but we're damp. And then I can come in and I can add any kind of design that I want. I can add some mixed media marks. So maybe across here, let's do some like X's guys. Where I'm smudging and smearing my paint side to side, if you guys can see that. Where I'm literally picking up the paint, almost like little stitches. It'll give me that effect across here. And then if I want to really pull it, I can just, probably should use a paper towel, not my fingers, but just to show you guys. Some different things that you can do. You could write words on here, but you'd have to write them backwards. All sorts of things. So we've got some X's there. Um, I've done the splatters kind of in the middle. So maybe we could do some circles over here. And this is essentially going to pull your paint up. just to give it some contrast. And we can fill that in with some texture later. And maybe some grunge. So like, um, and this won't hurt your jelly plate. It's rubber, and it's just pulling the paint off the surface. So again, you just want to make sure that you're a little damp. You're not, like, too wet. It just helps pull the paint. There we go. These are kind of like little mixed media marks. Little T's. Like that. And then we could do another circle over here. With some layers. There we go. So I've pulled the paint off in those areas. So then when I come in with the next layer of paint, guys, it's going to cover that. So again, I just keep building my layers because so far they're pretty thin. And it doesn't matter if they dry as you go. We're just going to keep building these layers. So now I want to come in with some something darker. Uh, I got a nice bronze. So maybe we'll go this way with bronze on this side. So let's do that across here. It's a really nice color. 
There we go. And raw umber. Let's do that more over here. Yeah, right about there. <clears throat> there we go. So we get like that darker. It comes through there. And some more yellow ochre at the top. So as you guys can see, I'm using multiple layers of paint to give it all contrast and different effects. There we go. And I want to kind of fill that in a little bit too and pull it across. So I'm happy with that. And then when I'm done, what I want to do is come in with a layer of white. So I can let that dry for a second. So you guys can decide. I can pull this with paper or I can pull this with a deli sheet. Hi, Jan. Thanks for joining, love. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Edwin. Thanks for joining. So it's up to you guys. I can pull this with deli sheets or I can pull this with, with paper. Uh, maybe for this one, we'll pull it with a deli sheet, just so we see what kind of effect we're going to get. So what I want to do is come in with a really good coat of, yeah, my white acrylic paint. And I use um, Liquitex Basics Titanium White. So this one here has to be a really good coat. And I want to make sure that it's even across the whole entire thing because this is what we're using. This is the layer that's going to pull our print. There we go. And we want to be relatively quick. So I'm going to come in right like this. And it doesn't matter. You can pull it with titanium white. You can pull it with black. You can pull it with whatever you like. My acrylic seasons are really small, so that's why I'm using um, my bigger container of white. And then what I want to do after buying the sample pack, the ones that I use the most often, so this was a great way to sample all the colors, and the ones that I find are my favorites or the ones I use all the time, those are the ones I'll buy like um, an 8.5 ounce container of. So I didn't want to go ahead and buy like all of them in that. I wanted to see what colors I'd use all the time and which ones were my favorite. So I bought like that um, 48 pack of the small ones to kind of give them a try. So I just wanted to share that. That's why I did that. Here we go. And this will let you know too at the side if you're ready to pull your print. So it's either going to give you like a really good pull and it's all going to come up or you might need another minute to, and you can take your brayer too and you can, that's the other thing too, if you want a really good pull. There we go. Yep, like that. There we go. Now we'll give that a try. There we go. So I didn't see too much of my stamping underneath. But if you guys can see, you get all kinds of different effects. So I can sort of see where I got um, 
my circles, if you guys can see that. I got bits and pieces of it. So you're not going to get like your full impressions, but you're going to get bits and pieces of things. And that's what I absolutely love about this. And you can see here the slight alteration stamp that I used. That's what gave me uh, the texture here on the corner. You can see part of my circle on this side. My crosses and my X's, I don't think I'm not seeing them at all, but that's okay. And so we just keep building layers, guys. So that's a great little piece to use for collaging. And I love doing the multiple, the multiple backgrounds. So maybe for the next one, we can um, see, and then I have this here too. So this will do another print. So um, where I've lost layers, they'll be primarily under here. So we can try pulling this again. Um, yeah, another maybe another white layer. So just a little bit there. That's the great thing too. It does a lot of it, some of it pulls up and some of it sticks down. So that's the great thing, too, with the jelly plate, because you never really know what you're going to get until it kind of happens. So it's just a super fun, fun way of building your, your collage papers. This one will do on paper. Here we go. So I've kind of cut these down, and I'm just using copy paper. I want to be able to rip and tear these different ways for um, for collaging next week because the next page in our book is going to be um, like a collaging basics kind of thing and I'm going to show you guys some of my favorite techniques to do of how to build your layers and what to use and how to um, I mentioned um, breaking your page into thirds and I find that really important for collaging to be able to have like a balance between your elements from the top to the bottom to the sides and then to figure out where your focal point's going to be. So I have lots of fun stuff to share for that. So tonight I just wanted to um, build up some of our, our elements that we're going to use in our next page. It's so much fun. And it's a great way to use our products. There we go. So let's see what we get with this one. So let's give that a pull up. See, guys, there's my little crosses that we did. So see, it's super fun. And you end up with, there's my rings, part of my rings here on this side. Yeah, my little X's that I did. And you can sort of see some of my, my marks at the top, if you guys can see that. So that's, again, really fun. And they all give you, like, different um, colors and textures and pieces of the elements. And I'm not seeing any of my stamping. So I don't know, maybe I did do, do too many layers of that, or maybe my ink pad's too wet. I'm not sure. Um... I highly recommend Joyce the 5x7 plate because it's about 20 bucks, uh, maybe $18.99, $20 in Canada, whereas the larger plate is closer to $30 or $40. Um, I ordered mine from Amazon, and for, you know, for doing these techniques where you're making, like, um, a little mixed media piece or if you're making a card or, like, even for me, like, these collage pieces are going to be great size. And this is just the 5x7 plate. So for me, this is all I would really need. And that's great for doing tags. And I mean, um, I have the 8x10 plate, but I find um, it's it's too big. And I'm struggling to get a focal point on it because it's so big. And it does, and it's still, it's 8x10, so it doesn't even do like a full sheet of paper. So I find it easier to do things like your collaging and your collage papers and your smaller things. And then I can rip and tear this and use bits and pieces in my work. And I could um, make a master board and then um, add my pieces together and collage them for, say, digital papers or something. So I just wanted to share that. So for me, the most economical plate of them all, if you had to buy one today, I would say the 5x7 plate. It's just perfect. Yes, they have them at Michael's too. Absolutely, Joyce. 
Um, mine, are, mine is, this is the best plate you can get. And I highly recommend this. This is the gel press, gel printing plate. And this is the five by seven. And with this brand, you can do everything from um, your acrylic paints, any of them, any acrylic paints, um, doesn't matter the brand. And you can use um, your sprays. It's like your spray stains, your distress inks and oxides. And um, you can pull out your ink pads and put your ink pads down. And then, of course, what I did here with the Ranger Archival, your Ranger Archival ink with your stamps. So I just wanted to share that. Yep. That's what I use. And it's perfect. Okay, so let's do the next one. So I have little bits and pieces here, and I'm not worried about that. That's going to give me some really cool texture that I don't really even know about. And we're going to do the same thing. Um, so the other thing I wanted to show you, too, when we're doing an image transfer. So let's do this. So you guys can see, and we'll use black. So it really pops. This one here is my black, I think. Yeah, let's do this. And then you guys will be able to see better. So when I ink this, you don't have to put paint on top of it either. So if you wanted the stamp, oh, and I'm going to show you guys, because this is another way to do it. Because so I sort of got it, but not really. If I want it like more of a bold statement, you can pull it off in multiples. So let's do that. Where I'm literally stamping my stamp down like this and then I'm going to uh, that's still damp so let's take our next one that we're going to do and I'm gonna put this right down here like that and again you can add your paints to it or whatever you like but you don't necessarily have to that's going to give me a perfect transfer of my stamp but as you can see it's totally different than actually just stamping it it gives it that grungy effect so I really love that guys so again that's my first layer and then I can continue putting stuff over it so that's super awesome and I can go lighter so Again, let's do some yellow okra, like this, here in this corner kind of thing, pull it in. And I find too, guys, it doesn't really make too much of a mess. Like, I mean, the other night, <laughs> the other night, guys, when I was cleaning up, I went to the bathroom and I was washing my hands and I looked in the mirror and I looked again. I had gesso all over my face. I was like, how in the world did I get gesso on my face? When we were um, doing the, the other pages. So I find this to be less messy. We're not sticking our fingers in it and we're not, um, we're not moving stuff too far. Um, all over the place. So it's, this isn't too bad of a mess. And then I can bray off too, but I'm not worried about it. Because again, I'm mixing my colors. I'm not worried that we're, um, that we're mixing colors. This is just having like a, a play. There, and I like that. That's nice rusty brown colors. I love the vintage grunge look, so this is absolutely me. And then again, we'll come in, and it doesn't matter, guys. You can just do, you know, a bunch of layers of paint, put down your stamping, and I'll show you guys, and then we'll just come right in with the white to pull it up. So you just want to make sure that you have that good layer of, um, that good solid layer of acrylic, and you got to be quick with this one to make sure that we can pull this right up. So again, um, I'm going to leave that like that because that's like another collage piece. 
but I can come right in with this one. And doesn't matter if I overlap them, I can just come right in here. And this is how I would do the dough sheets, guys. I'd make one on one side and then I'd pull it from the other. I can do more stamping on that too. And I have a nice crinkled effect in the paper. So that's a really neat effect too. You don't have to brayer it. It's just giving me a really good transfer. And the deli sheets are very thin. So it also, um, that's what I love about the deli sheets and tissue papers and things like that. Um, you can basically create like your own collaging papers and it gives you a neat effect with your stamps too. I love it. So there guys, I'm really loving that. That's another super grungy one. And these don't take long to dry. And again, when they do, it's very translucent if you guys can see that. So that's why I love the deli sheets. It's almost like working with um, washi tape that isn't sticky, if that makes sense. So it's very similar to that. And um, for this one, I've done the matte side down and the shiny side up. There. And I do opposite for when I'm um, doing... Um, the tissue papers, I do shiny side down, and I stamp on the matte side. It's just a, it, you don't have to do it that way, it's just my preference. So I just wanted to share that. So we've got a couple so far, and then, so I've got this really neat thing going on here. So again, guys, we can come in with our mixed media tools. And again, it's a set of two, guys, and it's not bad. They, they were um, $18.99 from Amazon. And, um, they're great, though, because you can use these with stencils, texture. You can, um, when you do texture paste, you can actually add, um, your texture into it. Um, you could write into your texture paste. There's all sorts of things you can do. So these are, like, the multi-purpose, um, mixed media tool. Here's the other one. And the other one is, like, um like a, like a flat brush. So this is great if you want to do texture paste over a small area, or again, if you just want to like add some, like some lines, it gives you like a nice flat edge. So here we go. I've got some like grungy kind of mark making kind of things. I've already kind of got that going on here. So let's just add some more lines. Um, I'm not too linear, so this is like stepping out of the box for me. I'm more of like a spills and a splatters um, artist. Uh, that's just how I've always kind of been. But I've been really stepping out of my box lately. So there, that's kind of neat. That gives me some different kind of lines and effects. And this won't hurt your jelly plate either. So because it's the silicone brush, it's just pulling up bits and pieces. So I'm going to have that, like, really neat textured effect now. Oh, absolutely, Joyce, you can use, uh, you can use, um, um, I like the deli sheets, but you can use, uh, like, I use dollar store tissue paper. That's for, like, you know, like for, um, for gift wrapping, you know, where you, you put it, it comes in different colors. I get the white one and then I stamp it. And then when I decoupage it, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like using napkins where the whole thing disappears to the background and you just have your image. Um, see, I did that with this one. And you'd never know that that's tissue paper. You would think that I stamped that because it erases right to your background. So that's that one. That's a collage piece. And then this one here too. Yeah. So you can sort of see, and that's from the dollar store tissue paper. So it's a great way to make your own collage papers. And I, like for me, with all my Tim Holtz stamps, I love doing that. And then I layer them too. So, you know, my slight alterations and different things, then I can I can build my layers with that. So it's just, it's super fun. Um, so that's my tissue paper method. And then 
Um, that's the same thing too when Lori did a demo where she showed us um, stamping on napkins. So same thing, you can take the the um, weight plies of your napkins. I've been saving some of mine. You can stamp them all out and then um, you can decoupage them down. And the great thing too, guys, if you use gel medium as your base for um, for decoupaging any of your tissue papers, then that's your, um, always remember that's your base product for your distress crayons. So your uh, so it's like, yes, your distress won't stick to it, but your acrylic paint will, and so will your, um, your distress cr crayons. It's actually the perfect primer base for distress crayons. They just, they, they move better, they're more vibrant, and you use less product. So that's why I love using the collage papers with my gel medium, and then I can use my distress crayons. And that's the great thing about our mixed media products, guys, is that you're not, like, limited um, to one or two things. Um, all of your stuff will absolutely play amazingly with, um, with all your products. And same thing with the jelly plate. So here I've got the Seth Aptor spray. I've got kind of a mess going here because I knocked it over. <laughs> I always um, store my sprays standing up, but I knocked it over. So I just have a little inky mess. But these are great. They don't clog. I don't have to shake them. I don't have to do anything. So I just wanted to share that. So there we've got some spray. And as you can see, because I've gone over top of the acrylic paint, we're having a really nice play there. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I have to, so this is turquoise, Seth Aptor, and this is coffee. These are literally, guys, my two favorite colors. They're just gorgeous. So I've got some nice splatters there. And you can add water. You don't have to add water. Um, you can use like a, here I have a sponge. Craft sponge. Here we go. And I can come in and I can move it around wherever I feel like I want to spread it out. Or I can leave it as splatters. So see guys, I can move it into the paint and I can blend it like that. Where I'm pushing it into the paint. And then if I feel like I don't have enough and I want some more splatter, I just come in and give it some more. Or I could do the same thing and I could blend the two together. So just to give you options, I just wanted to share that. And then, yeah, I want this to maybe dry for like a couple seconds. And then we can pull our print. So you get all kinds of different effects from that. And it's a lot of fun. Um, so while I'm doing that, we could build this. Because this is the other thing too, right? We're stamping. So it kind of gives us that really neat effect. I have some Ranger archival ink still on this one. So I can just kind of come in and put it all down wherever I kind of think. And I can build up this background that I have here. And same with this. Maybe we'll offset it and do one the opposite way. You guys, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing because of the jelly plates in my way. Here we go. So then see, I have kind of like um, a stamped image and then the grungy one there. Then I put some slight alterations there. And we can also build that up with paints and different things too. Um, I just want to give that a second. Maybe I'll move it around just a little bit. Okay, there we go, because I want to come in with my paint. There. Perfect. So I'm just going to kind of, yeah like that and like that going to pull another um, deli print. Yep. Shiny side. Here we go.
Oh, I know, Tammy. That's one of my favorite stamp sets. Spills and splatters. And then Tim Holtz has a, has a stencil that kind of matches that, too. And then the Mini Muse is the, um, the smaller version of that. Let's see what we have here. Oh, that's amazing. As you guys can see, it kind of looks like a, it almost reminds me of like an ocean background. There's the sand and some foliage and then the water. That is cool. Almost like a little lake or a pond or the ocean. Super fun. And I just added some of the um, Seth Aptor spray. And then what you can do, too, if you're not happy with something, you can do multiple prints. So you don't feel like you have to be one and done, guys. And that's the great thing. So maybe I want some of that in this, but not the whole thing. Let's take a section of it. Maybe this side. Because I kind of feel like I'm really happy with this side here. That's super cool. But I feel like this side kind of needs something. So let's kind of... See how this plays right across here like this. Yeah, we'll just take half of it. So let's come in like that. Right across here like this. Okay. Whoops. There we go. There we go. So that kind of gave me a neat effect. I really like that with like the sand and look at the grunge on the side there with the texture. That is so amazing. See, I love how that's turned out. So see, I still ended up getting bits and pieces of the underneath of this one, but then with this one over top, it kind of lightens it up a little bit. So then my collage elements, when I'm collaging this, it's going to be easier to get a contrast between the two, if that makes sense, with stamping and more paint and different things. It's going to be a lot of fun, guys. I can't wait for next week when I show you guys a lot of the layering and how we're going to do this. So it's nice to have all kinds of um, elements handy that we that we can use in our, in our page. So I'm just kind of pu pushing these all beside me. I'll show you them all after because I'm just waiting for, for some of them to dry. So this one here is completely dry, and I love how it's turned out. And see how you get like that translucent sort of, sort of effect because it's really thin paper on the deli sheet. That's going to be so much fun to play with. So I'm really happy with. It almost looks like cracked leather. If you guys can see that, like an old leather, cracked leather couch. That's neat. I love that super grungy with the rest, and the other one's drying. And then we have that one here that we added our other layer to. Then I feel like we need to darken this. So let's add some, let's get some metallics in here too. Uh, what have we got? Bronze. That sounds kind of fun. And we'll just, yeah, right through here. And then we'll spread it out. Aw, oh, thanks, Tammy. There we go. Kind of pull it in this way. Okay, and then we'll add a layer of white. Whoops, it's probably too much. That's okay.
Okay, we'll grab another jelly sheet. Because that one's really, really wet. There we go, so I got my good stick, and then I use the brayer for making sure our surface is totally put together. And it's awesome, guys. I have um, all kinds of different uh, tissue papers. Um, so, like I said, the ones from my dollar store I love because I can stamp them. The, and I just buy the, the white ones, and I stamp them, and I can use those. Um, Tim Holtz makes them. Uh, Dina Wakely makes them. Prima makes them. Um, you can use napkins. There's so many things that we can do. And the other thing I really love to do, too, with the gel medium, um, you can take the collage papers. Um, I haven't tried it yet with the... Home, my homemade um, papers. I've only ever done those to um, to cardstock, and it was perfect. But what I like to do with the Tim Holtz ones and uh, the Prima, I've taken my my Ultra Matte Gel, uh, the Liquitex Gel Medium, and you can decoupage them to fabric. So I just wanted to share that. I have done some beautiful um, muslin fabric journals with Tim Holtz um, collage papers and they turned out wonderful. There we go. And there's a nice, really cool sand kind of print. And it's really neat too because do you see this, the corners here? I've gotten all kinds of uh, grunge. It almost looks like I've got script there, but I don't. That's the slight alterations. Um, Um, stamp coming through a little bit and then I've got yeah it almost looks like little bulrushes in the center little pond love that so I'm getting some really neat effects here and these are gonna be super fun for next week so as you guys can see with these two they're soaking wet though I have two very different variations of that so that's really awesome so that's kind of the, um, the direction these went. I love how that turned out. So make a beautiful collage piece. Oh, thanks for joining us, Joyce. And yeah, next week we'll have the, um, we'll have the, uh, part, the part two where we're putting all this beautiful stuff to good use. There, maybe pull another one just to see what happens. There we go. And we can do a final print pull. That is wonderful. If you guys can see that. So I just pulled the rest of what was on my plate. So that's where we've made all of those mixed media marks. If you guys can see that. So I caught literally the very first layer of everything where I've done that with the with all the marks. So yeah, it is truly amazing. Like doing the um the jelly plate pulls and using um your basic tools. And these wash up so great, guys, because they're the silicone brushes. I just have to put a little water and just wipe them with um my paper towels. So it is wonderful. So yeah, we've got some great pieces now. And again, I'm not going to wash this. So I'm just going to go ahead and let it dry on my plate. Because we're going to get something beautiful next time. If you guys can see that, I still have, um, I still have my uh, textures on here from tonight. 
and we'll just keep letting that surface build up. So I'm going to come in and just um, put that back into the um, silicone plastic and put it right back away. There we go. So, and this is just how I store it, guys. Same thing. And it, just how it comes. So basically you take the clean piece of acetate from the bottom, put it down, and put it on top. Like that. And like this. And this just keeps it nice and firm. And then I put it right back in my in my packaging. And it keeps your plate good and you don't even have to you don't have to clean it, you don't have to do anything. And I do, I love the effect it gives because then the next time I go to play with my plate, I might get pieces of that. And you kind of let this build. And you let it build up and build up and build up and then one day you're going to get this beautiful thing that you weren't expecting from all the leftovers that's, that's on your plate. But you can though, if, I mean, if that really bothers you, you could take um, some gentle soap like Dawn or Dove soap and you could, um, you could wash it in the... Um, in the sink with just some light, some light, um, soap and water. I'm going to check my time and I'll recap. Yeah, it's getting super late. It's almost midnight, guys. My time. So yeah, just a little water and it'll get my little brushes completely clean. And these are just silicone. Here we go. Yep, I just wanted to share that. So these are great. And I keep them in with my paintbrushes. So they come, whoops, they come in. They come clean quite easily. Yeah, so I wanted to share that. You don't ever leave your brushes like this in water or you'll be re having to refix them. So I just wanted to share that. That's why mine just did that. Because I do have a horrible tendency of leaving my brushes in water. Which is a habit I have to break. There we go. So we can just, yep, and same with my brayer, guys. I just take it and I just bray off what's there so it's dry. I'm not worried about cleaning it. Same thing, guys. So then all I have to do is just do a light um, clean of my mixed media mat. So the, um, I probably should have added that to something else. That's okay. And same thing. This is how I like to clean my stamps, just to show you guys. Um, so I just take my, my distress mister and I add. And, and I also used, um, Ranger Archival Ink. So I didn't use like um, anything water-based or would come right off. But it doesn't matter because the Archival Ink primes your stamps so that your Distress Inks stick better to it. So I don't mind to have a little bit of Archival Ink on it as long as um, it's not on there and it's wet. So that the next Archival Ink I go into, it's going to... Um, to smear the color. So that's just what you want to prevent. So just by misting it a little bit and then drying it with your with your paper towel. That's the best way to clean it. Just a little bit of water. There we go. Yep, just like that. And these are ready for me to to put back away. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, you guys have a fabulous weekend. And I will see you back this week. And, yeah, we'll put all these beautiful collage papers to, to good use. So thank you guys so much. Have a fabulous weekend. And I'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.